We now move from general functions to the special case of linear functions, or lines. Now, lines are extremely important in mathematics. First, they're very easy to describe geometrically. So if I have a line, if I know two points on the line, I get the entire line back by just connecting the dots. On the other hand, as functions go, lines have very predictable behavior. So in the real world, we often solve problems by taking things that are not lines and putting lines into the picture. So that's gonna be a recurring theme. Now, for us, we wanna do the basic theory. So you may have seen y equals mx plus b before, but we start with the standard form of the line, or standard equation of the line. So this is given by ax plus by equal to c, a, b, and c are some fixed numbers, and then you can see the x and y in there with no powers, nothing fancy going on. Now why do we start here? Well, we're going to need it later when we do systems of linear equations, so we want to be able to recognize that the things we're using are lines, but that we don't need to worry about now. If we were to start with y equals mx plus b, we would miss the vertical lines. So vertical lines don't fit into the y equals mx plus b equation. They're the form x equal to a. So you'll note if I let b be equal to zero, then the standard form catches vertical lines also. Then for the task we wanna do now, well, if I have the standard form of a line, we can directly get the x and y intercepts. So these will be two points in our line, if we can get them. Then, once I know those, I can get the graph of the line just by connecting the dots. And then we're going to want a third point just to check our work. Now, for definitions, if I have any function, I'll call the x-intercepts those points that are on the x-axis. If I'm on the x-axis, that means I have height zero, which means we set y equal to zero. Likewise, for the y-intercept, okay, so this is vertical now, we have no left or right, which means the x is equal to zero. And so these are definitions worth putting on a no card. And so note, if I want the x or y-intercept, we set the opposite variable equal to zero. Now that's enough to get a line, but if you wanna be sure you should plot a third point how do I get a third point? Well, we have an equation, which means you could pick your favorite x or y, stick it into the equation, figure out the other one, and then you'll get a point x comma y to put on your graph to check. Now note, there's a little bit of art there, okay, because you have to actually make choices. So if you don't wanna make choices, you could just let x be equal to one, then you may need to deal with fractions or you can stare at your equation for a while and see if you get something that always produces integers when integers go in. But that takes a little bit of um, intuition and art. Now let's look at an example. So we'll start with the line x minus two y equal to four. I wanna find the x and y intercepts and then a third point, and then I wanna plot the graph. Now for the x-intercept, remember, I set y equal to zero, and here that directly gives me x equal to four. So that's gonna give us the point four comma zero. Okay, remember for a point, I need two numbers, and we're getting the y equals zero for free. So this says we're gonna go right four up zero on the graph. Okay, so I go right four up zero, and then that's our x-intercept, and note this point is on the x-axis as promised. For the y-intercept, we'll set x equal to zero in the equation. So that gives me minus two y equal to four. We divide both sides by minus two. I get y equal to minus two. I have two numbers to get a point. So that's the point zero minus two, which says I'm gonna go right zero or stay. And then we go down by two. So that's gonna give us this point here. Note, this is on the y-axis. So that's the y-intercept. Then you can connect the dots and that gives you your picture. Now, to check my work, for a third point, you could just let x or y be equal to one and solve. Um, but I could stare at this for a little bit and try to figure out what kind of number is gonna work. So what I could do is just let x be equal to six, 
Okay, I know that that goes over to the other side is a minus six to give me minus two y equal to minus two. Divide both sides by minus two and I get y equal to one. So that gives me the point six comma one, which says we go right six and then up one. And note that's on the line, so that checks my work. Now, had I stared at this for a little bit longer, I could have noticed, I could have directly went with y equal to one, move that over and I get my six immediately. So a little bit of art form here, and once you get an answer, you might get a better answer if you think about it a little bit harder. Next, perhaps the most important feature of a line is its slope. So let's motivate that. Now, how do we build a line? Well, if I have two points, then I could just connect the dots. We'll do the numbers for that later. Or if I have one point and I know the angle of inclination as I go through the point, then that'll give me a line. The way we measure inclination is with the slope. Now, where does that come from? So if I have rise over run, okay, well, the picture I would draw, I draw in my line and we'll make it go up and to the right. I could drop any two right triangles off of my line where the sides are parallel to the axes. These are gonna be similar triangles and we know for similar triangles, ratios of common sides, those numbers never change. So if I let H1 and H2 represent the heights, R1 and R2 represent the runs, H1 over R1 will be equal to H2 over R2. So that's rise over run, that's what we call the slope. That number will not change no matter how you change these right triangles. So when we calculate slope, we have a lot of freedom in the points that we pick to do so. Now, for a formula, okay, rise over run, well, if I have two points, say, x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, rise over run, what do we do? Well, for the rise, we're looking at the height, so that's the difference in y's, so that'll be y2 minus y1. And for the run, we're looking for the difference in the x's, which will be x2 minus x1. So that's our formula for slope, to change in y's over the change in x's. Note, the order matters in these. I have to have the twos above each other and the ones above each other. If I'm gonna switch, I have to switch positions of these and these at the same time so I don't mess the signs up. Now, for an example, let's find the slope of the line that goes through the points minus one, minus two, and three, six. For bookkeeping, I'll label x1, y1, and x2, y2. So that way I just need to drop my numbers into the formula. Whenever we have negative numbers, as usual, we'll put in parentheses so we don't lose signs. So when we drop things in, I'll have, okay, so rise is six minus minus two over three minus a minus one. Signs go to plus, so we'll get eight over four or two. Now, if I plot my points, okay, so minus one, minus two down here, 3, 6 over here, we'll note this is going up and to the right, and then that's going to be a feature of when the slope is positive. So the sign tells you about the inclination, the direction of it, and the number itself tells you how steep or how flat your line is. We'll say a little bit more about that in a bit. Let's try another example. So let's find the slope of the line between 1, 3 and 3 comma minus 3. As usual, we'll label x1, y1, x2, y2. We drop our numbers in the formula. Okay, so here we don't have to worry about the double negative. I get a minus 6 over 2, which is a minus 3. So now I've got a negative slope. If we plot our points, then we'll notice we're going to get a line that's going declining instead of inclining up and to the right. So now it goes down and to the right. And so that's gonna be the features for positive slope and a negative slope. We could summarize this with pictures. So in general, if your slope's negative, going down and to the right, 
if it's positive going up and to the right, and then we're gonna see right now, if your slope is exactly equal to zero, you have a horizontal line, and if your slope is undefined, meaning you're dividing by zero, we'll have a vertical line. Let's take a look at horizontal lines. Now, in general, horizontal lines are gonna have the form y equal to b. So if you're thinking of y equals mx plus b, if the slope is equal to zero, you're gonna drop out the mx. If I take, say, y equal to three, now, if you see this out in the wild, the thing you need to remind yourself is, is that there's no x in this equation, but that's not a problem. That means no matter what x we put in, a three comes out. So if I pick x equal to minus one, three comes out. If I put in zero, three comes out. If I put in one, three comes out. I could take these points and make a graph. So when I plot all of these, you'll notice out comes a horizontal line with its height at three. And so that's exactly what we should think here. If I see y equal to three, that's really just saying take all points that are height equal to three, that's a horizontal line. Now, how about the slope? Well, if the slope is rise over run, you'll note this thing never rises. It always has rise equal to zero. So that means if I do rise over run, I'm going to have zero over a number. Okay, and that number will never be zero. So zero over a number, that's always zero itself. Okay, so zero is in the numerator up top. No zero in the bottom. That number is equal to zero. To check with actual numbers, let's try. Okay, I'll take the minus one, three, and the one, three. We'll drop those numbers into our slope equation. Okay, note I use the parentheses for the signs. That gives me zero over two, and as noted, zero over two is just zero itself. And so we get slope equal to zero. Now let's do the same for vertical lines. So here the equation is just given by x equal to a number a. For instance, let's try x equal to minus 1. Now, here, there's no y in the equation, so we should treat this as y can be anything, but x is always going to be equal to a minus 1. So what do we do? We pick our favorite y's, and then we're always going to have x equal to minus 1. So if y is minus 1, we get x equal to minus 1. y is 0, x is minus 1. y is 1, x is minus 1. That never changes. If we plot points, okay, so here we're always going to the left by one. And so with these three points, when I connect the dots, we get a vertical line as promised. Now, for the slope, okay, if we're gonna do rise over run, then this is gonna be different from the horizontal line where the rise is gonna depend on the numbers that you choose. That'll always be a number, non-zero but the run is always zero because we can never go off of the same um, direction, left or right. So that's gonna be dividing by zero so we get undefined. Okay, we're not allowed to divide by zero. If we wanna check this with actual numbers, let's take minus one, minus one, and minus one, one. We drop them into our formula, and then we note, okay, what happens here, we've got double negatives, so they're gonna to turn to pluses and I get two over zero, which is undefined as promised. Okay, one thing to note, how should I read x equal to minus one? That just says we're taking all points that go to the left by minus one, which has to be a vertical line. Now, that's some qualitative explanation of slope. Let's see how we work in slope with actual numbers. So if I wanna get actual equations of lines from points, the first thing we do is consider slope intercept form. So this is y equals mx plus b, which you may have seen before. Now the parts here, m is the slope, okay, assuming it's not undefined, then you gotta use the vertical line formula. And then b, okay, well, B is not the y-intercept, it's the y-value of the y-intercept. 
The y-intercept, remember, has x equal to zero, so it needs two points, zero b. But we'll typically just call b the y-intercept as a shorthand. Now, from these two here, how does this get me a formula? Well, note, if you're given the m, the slope, and zero comma b as a point, I could put these parts into the slope equation with an unknown point x comma y. So we'll get the slope is equal to, okay, so the change in y is y minus b, that's the y1, and then x minus zero, that's the x1. I put m over one, and then we can cross multiply to get mx equals y minus b. I push the b to the other side, and we get our slope intercept formula. Now, let's use a slope intercept equation to get our graph. So here, the idea is once I get the slope and the y-intercept, we can put those together qualitatively to get a picture. For example, let's use the slope and the y-intercept to sketch y equal to minus 3 halves x plus 4. The parts we have here, okay, so the slope is minus 3 over 2. The y-intercept, okay, we've got b is 4, so that's going to be 0, 4. Now, we could just put numbers into this and get points and draw a picture, but let's see how the slope works. Now, remember, slope is rise over run. So the rise is a y thing, the run is an x thing. So if I write minus 3 over 2, okay, there the minus sign's out in front. For negative fractions, we can move the minus sign either to the numerator or to the denominator. We'll see here that gives us different things. Now, if I put the minus sign in the numerator, we have minus 3 over 2. So the rise is minus 3, which means down 3. The run is 2, so write 2. The way we use this, I take a point that I know, the y-intercept 0, 4, and then this says to add 2 comma minus 3 x goes to x, y goes to y. So that'll give me 2, 1. On the other hand, I could write the slope as 3 over minus 2. Again, with rise over run, we have up 3 and left 2. We take a point that we know, 0, 4, and now I'm going to add minus 2, 3. x to x, y to y, which gives us minus 2, 7. If we plot these three points, okay, we get our line. In the middle, we have the y-intercept, and this describes exactly how we moved away from the y-intercept. So if we were to go right by 2, then I had to go down by 3, which is the first one. And if I go left by 2, then I have to go up 3, which gets us to the second, third point. And so, in general, what a minus 3, 2 says, every time I go right by 2, I got to go down by 3. Let's try another one. So here we want to find the m and the b for the line, minus 3x plus 4y equal to 12, and then we want to sketch from that data. Now, key step here is, if I want to use y equals mx plus b, I need to isolate the y. So remember the procedure there, without the checklist, I get all the y stuff on one side, all the non-y stuff on the other, and then I got to get the y by itself, which means I'm going to have to divide by something. So what do I do? First, I get the 4y by itself, so I'll add 3x to both sides. So I get 4y equals 3x plus 12. To get y by itself, I just divide everything by a 4. When I divide the 3x plus 12 by 4, okay, and so note, you have to get the 4 on everything. Then I can separate this into 3x over 4 and 12 over 4. So this is going to give me y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. So the slope is 3 fourths. The y part of the y-intercept is a 3. Now, for the sketch, we know a point. The y-intercept is 0, 3. So I want to use the 3 fourth to get a point in each direction off of the intercept. Now, if I write it as 3 over 4, okay, rise over run says we're going to have up 3 and write 4. So I'm going to add 4 comma 3, x goes to x, y goes to y to give us 4 comma 6. 
And then if I go with negative, so here it's gonna be a double negative because they'll just cancel to give you a plus. So we're doing that backwards. Rise over run says we go down three and then left four. So that's gonna be the same as adding to zero three, the minus four minus three, which gives us minus four zero. Now note, that's gonna be the x-intercept, which we could have solved for if we wanted, but we now have three points. We plot them, and then as before, starting from the y-intercept, the rule is gonna be, okay, either I'm gonna go right four and up three, or I'm gonna go left four and then down three. 